now that we've solved the firm problem, um, we can introduce the labor demand and labor supply. Uh, so these two curves are going to be very helpful um, to actually solve the model. So in the same way that aggregate demand and aggregate supply were really um, critical to help us um, solve the basic model of Slack, having labor demand, labor supply will help us solve this two market uh, model. Um, you know, in addition to the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve. So we need four curves uh, to solve this two market model. Um, but the two new curves that we'll introduce to help us solve the model are the labor demand and labor supply curve. Um, so what are these curves uh, and what are their properties? So the labor supply curve is just going to tell us uh, the amount of workers who find a job given labor force participation and the matching process. Um, here, labor force participation is exogenous. So, um, what's the expression for the labor supply curve? So, we'll denote it L, we'll put an S for supply. It's going to depend only on the labor market tightness. And so, it's going to be F hat of theta, that's the job finding rate, times H, that's um, that's um, the, you know, the size of the labor force. So this f of theta here is just our job finding rate, job finding probability. And this is our labor force. So very simple expression. Um, and you can see the parallel with the um, aggregate supply curve that we had in the basic model. Um, and so what are the properties of our labor supply? Well, uh, so that's pretty easy. Labor supply when tightness is zero, that's zero. That's because the job finding probability when tightness is zero, if there are no vacancy, is just zero. Um, we also know that uh, the limit of the labor supply theta when tightness is infinite, that's going to be H. And that's because um, the limit of f hat of theta when theta equals to infinity, that's one. Um, okay, so this is just saying that if the labor market is infinitely tight, um, the labor supply is going to converge to the size of the labor force. Everybody is going to have a job. We also know that um, LS is going to be uh, increasing in theta strictly. Um, that's because f hat is uh, increasing in data uh, more strictly. And another thing that uh, we also know is that LS is going to be con uh, concave in data, and that's just because F hat is concave in data. So basically, the labor supply um, you know, inherits all the properties of the job finding rate F of data. And you know, we can just uh, plot it For future reference, so if I put uh, my tightness, labor market tightness here, and here I put employment, and this is H, the size of the labor force, and this is zero, then the labor supply is going to look something like this. So it's going to be increasing, and it's concave in theta, but here I've put theta on the vertical axis, so it looks like a, it's going to be a convex curve. of data and um, and what we know so so the labor supply for any tightest data gives us employment l uh, but also we know that the gap between h so this is the labor force 
and LDCs are the number of workers who are unemployed. So this is employment, and this is unemployment. So you can read directly uh, unemployment off of the labor supply curve. So these are the properties of our labor supply. Now we can uh, define and look at the properties of the labor demand. So the labor demand is going to uh, give us uh, number of workers that firms want to hire for given tightnesses x theta and prices p and w so here we'll see actually the labor demand will depend on the two tightnesses what's going on on the uh, labor market that's because it will affect how easy it is um, to find workers and on the product market because that will affect how easy it is to sell uh, production um, and on the two prices p because that affects how uh, the price of services uh, that a firm can charge and W because it, affect, it affects that the way that the firm has to pay workers. So the so labor demand will involve the two prices and the two tightnesses. Um, so when I say the number of workers that firms want to hire, this means uh, this is basically, you know, uh, The goal, of course, you know, to maximize, you know, with the goal of maximizing profit. Right, so what's the expression for the labor demand? So it's going to be, and, and this, this expression, I don't invent it. It comes directly from uh, all the work we've done to solve the firm, uh, the firm problem. So here I'm just reusing our result from, uh, the solution of the firm problem. So our labor demand actually is going to depend on X, it's going to depend on theta, it's going to depend on W, and it's going to depend on P. And the expression is going to be F of X A alpha So this is our labor demand. Uh, so we can see a bit. Uh, so you know it's a much more complicated expression. Uh, so but we can we can uh, get a few of the uh, properties of the labor demand here. So one thing that we know is what is the labor demand when x the product market tightness is zero. We know it's going to be zero, and that's because f when x is equal to zero is zero. Uh, so basically, if you're not able to sell any of your uh, production, then you're not gonna you're not gonna hire anybody. So we can see that. We can also see that the labor demand when the labor market tightness is theta m, that's going to be zero. And here's the reason that tau hat when theta is equal to theta m, that's infinity. So when the labor market becomes tight and reaches a tightness theta m, the matching wedge becomes infinite. Um, so basically, in, the, in a situation like this, 
all the workers that you employ as a firm, they have to be devoted to recruiting. And so in a case like this, um, it's not really profitable to hire anybody. So tau theta goes to infinity and the labor demand goes to zero. Um, so the labor market is so tight, you just don't want to hire, uh, you just don't want to hire anybody. And then, you know, so these are, uh, these are two cases where the labor demand is zero. Then you can look at what happens when, uh, you know, when X goes to infinity, well, F of, uh, you know, if X goes to infinity, F of X goes to one. And so you can simplify the labor demand in that case. When theta goes to zero, tau hat of theta, that goes to rho hat over one minus rho hat. And so you can simplify uh, you can simplify the, you know, the labor demand a little bit in that case, and we can see uh, what its value is. Uh, or oh, actually, that's kind of an interesting case, the case theta equals zero. So in that case, LD theta equals zero, it's going to be, so the first term doesn't change, F of X, A alpha. Yes, and so here what's interesting is that uh, one plus tau of theta, therefore is going to be equal to uh, one over one minus rho hat. And therefore one over one plus theta, that's just going to be one minus rho hat. So that's kind of a simple expression. So when uh, tightness is zero, uh, the labor demand, well, labor market tightness is zero, the labor uh, demand has this simple expression that depends, uh, that doesn't depend on theta, of course, anymore. It depends on rho hat and the real wage, W over P and so on. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, then, um, now what, how about, so what we can see is that LD is increasing in X. That's because F of X is increasing in X. So what does that mean? Well, it means that when the product market is tighter, you're more likely to sell your production and that tends to boost uh, labor demand. Um, when the labor market, when the product market is tighter, the workers that you employ, in a sense, they are, they are busier because you're, you know um, each service is more likely to be sold, um, and therefore you tend to uh, you you know every single SQL you want to hire more workers because you know that the extra worker you will hire is more likely to be busy because your capacity uh, you sell a higher fraction of your capacity as a firm. What we can see also is that uh, the labor demand is going to be decreasing in theta. That's because tau hat of theta is increasing in theta. So what happens is that when the labor market is tighter, the matching wage is higher. So basically it's more expensive, it's more difficult to recruit. It's more expensive to recruit workers because you have to devote a larger share of your workforce to recruiting. So tau of theta goes up. And that tends to reduce labor demand, you know, of course, because uh, hiring workers becomes more expensive, more difficult, and therefore less profitable. So labor demand is going to be increasing in product market tightness, but decreasing in labor market tightness. Uh, another thing that's also obvious is that the labor demand is decreasing in the real wage W over P. Uh, and the intuition here is also very simple, is that if the real wage is high, um, employing worker is expensive and so you want uh, fewer workers. So these are the, you know, the four, three, four, the four arguments in the labor demand, wage, price, product market tightness, labor market tightness, and we've seen how they affect the labor demand. We've looked at a few special cases. Um, and we can also, you know, we can also draw the labor demand qualitatively in our little diagram. So I'll have tightness here. If I want to, um, so here I'm going to plot. Of course, 
labor demand depends both on the product market tightness, labor market tightness, so I could plot it. I could look at, I could put labor market tightness or product market tightness, the vertical axis here. I'm going to focus on the labor market diagram. So I'll have labor market tightness. I will have employment here. I have zero here. I have the size of the labor force here. So I can put the tightness theta m here. I know that when my tightness is theta m, the tightness such that the metric wage is infinite, the labor demand is zero. We saw that. Uh, we saw that here. So here I, have a, here I have labor demand at zero. Then I know that my labor demand is strictly decreasing in tightness, in labor market tightness. And then the last thing we know is that we know the value when tightness is zero. We know that we have this expression for the labor demand. So this is the value here of our labor demand. And so even with a zero tightness, uh, so when it's very easy to recruit, your labor demand is not, you know, it's not going to be uh, infinite. You know, it's, it's bounded by that value that depends on the real wage, the marginal product of labor, um, the probability to sell your goods, uh, and just an extra term uh, that depends on um, the matching, you know, the uh, matching cost. So this is this intersection here. And here I plotted it uh, linear, but of course in general it's not linear because you can see that uh, theta enters through tau hat and then you have an exponent. So it's not going to be linear like this, but for simplicity I plotted the labor demand like that. Last thing I want to point out is what would happen if the production function was linear. I mentioned earlier that you would have a degenerate labor demand. So uh, let me clarify here what I mean. Let me show you in what way the labor demand is degenerate with a linear production function. So with a linear production function, we can still uh, you know, we can still use the analysis that we've done, but then we have to set um, alpha is equal to one. So then what happens? So we can uh, rewrite the labor demand to be able to see what happened in that limited case. You can rewrite the labor demand as follows. So you have L D uh, one minus alpha is equal to F of X a alpha divided by the real wage. So if I multiply by one minus alpha, if I put the power of one minus alpha, this disappears here. And then I have one over one plus star hat of theta alpha. And alpha is equal to one, so this is going to also disappear. So So um, this expression here, this is just the labor demand uh, once I've put the left hand side and right hand side to the power of one minus alpha. Okay, but then if I have if I set uh, alpha is equal to one, then one minus alpha here that's going to be equal to zero, and so this is just going to be one, and this alpha here. This is also just going to be one, so we can get rid of it. <clears throat> so we can read uh, the more demand implies when alpha is equal to one, it's going to imply that one plus tau hat of theta 
I multiplied left and right hand side by 1 plus tau of theta is equal to f of x a alpha divided by the real wage. Oops. And so what we see is that basically um, there is no employment anymore in this equation. Uh, employment has dropped out. And so that's why this labor demand is degenerate. Um, and employment is not here anymore. And in fact, uh, what this labor demand pins down is that it pins down just one tight one labor market tightness as a function of the product market tightness and the price and the wage basically this defines implicitly uh, a labor market tightness as a function of uh, the wage w the price p and the product market tightness uh, so this is a, if we go back to our labor market tightest employment plane, this is a horizontal labor demand in the uh, theta L diagram. Right, and that, that's defined implicitly. So basically, uh, it would look something like this. And this one, of course, this is a, a labor demand with alpha strictly less than one. And the labor demand when alpha is equal to one becomes uh, becomes completely horizontal. Um, and so it's degenerate in that sense. And so here, you know, labor demand would just pin down a certain labor market tightness. And uh, but you know, a lot of the properties of the model uh, would be driven by what's going on with the labor supply in a world like this. And you wouldn't. At all captures this idea that the demand from firms limits the number of jobs in any way, which you do get that idea once you introduce alpha less than one, so diminishing marginal and returns to labor.